All right. Day two. Recession-proof your life in just 30 days. I'm talking slow and sultry like I'm a radio DJ when, in fact, I'm just a finance nerd here that's trying to help you with your personal finances as we go through one of the weirder times in the history of our country. But every day at 2 p.m. for the next 30 days, that's 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Daylight Savings. I don't know how that works. We're going to get together. We're going to spend 20, 30 minutes together. And we're going to work on your finances. What better opportunity to press reset on your financial life? So that's what we're going to do. If you miss the stream here live on Facebook, you can, of course, come back to the Facebook page. If you happen to be a non-Facebooker, sorry, Zuck, uh, you can go to YouTube.com slash Pete the Planner and check it out. Peter Dunn, I'm a personal finance expert, the CEO of a couple different companies. One's called Your Money Line and the other one is called Hey Money. And that's what we're doing today. Uh, and uh, also, I'm here to serve you for the next 30 days. So enough of all that garbage. Let's get started. Here's what you've missed in the last 24 hours. Probably nothing because we're all glued to our television sets. Uh, but here's what we've got going. Number one, the market looks like it wanted to stabilize uh, around 2 p.m. here, uh, again, Eastern time. Will it end up? I have no idea, but I guess we'll see. The hope with the market is that it finds its level without too much intervention. Here's what that means. If the market starts to feel like the pandemic, that's still weird to say. Man, that's weird to say. If the market feels like the pandemic is under control and the economy will not be shut down for too long, the market will have priced that in and it will level out a little bit. If the pandemic doesn't feel like it's under control and it feels like the economy will be shut down for the foreseeable future, months and months and months and months, the market's going to continue to do this no matter what the Fed does from an intervention standpoint. I will also say on the economy front, there was a press conference this afternoon where uh, uh, Mnuchin, Secretary Mnuchin, talked about, did I say it right? I don't know if I care. Uh, he talked about uh, sending checks to Americans so they have money during these trying times. As more details become available about that, when that turns into a reality, we will spend time at the beginning of this live stream helping you understand what that is. You know, I've been talking to some colleagues and friends and Mrs. Planner, who's in the other room, uh, about this all day. And what I find to be interesting is the people who have a full emergency fund that, that have stability. You know, what are your responsibilities with that money if it were to come in? If you really want to help, do you need to go out and spend it? And the better question is, if you do choose to spend it, what's the best thing to spend it on to make sure it trickles down to all the right corners of the economy? That's neither here nor there. You are here today to work on your financial life. Yesterday, we uh, tackled a couple of different things. We counted transactions. Heard from some of you that realized that you spend money too frequently. Right? We've always thought that the issue is that people spend too much money, but we don't realize that the frequency of which you spend money affects how much money you spend. That is true. You learned that yesterday, and hopefully you're starting to hit reset on some of those habits. We also got organized. We're grabbing our bank statements, our insurance statements, our pay stubs, which are going to become really important here soon, uh, and of course, our debt statements as well. If you uh, are here for the first time, you missed yesterday, and here's uh, the, the goal of our program. We want you to cut your spending by $500 in the next 30 days. Look, at some point, once we have stability, we are going to inject that money back into the economy, right? The, you know, I don't, I don't want to have this thing where we're all hoarding money, even though we're stable. Once you're stable, and I will help you determine what that means. Of course, it's based on your employment stability and your income stability and an emergency fund. Once those three check marks are ticked, let's spend money. Right. I can tell you as a personal finance expert who's done this for 20 years for me to say, let's spend money. It's sort of fun, right? It's like, hey, let's just go blow money because at some point we're going to have to do that. So what I want you to do is to get stable, make sure your house is in order because, you know, who lo doesn't love euphemisms uh, and make sure you're ready to go and spend that money. We also want to press reset on some of those bad habits that have formed over time. And uh, of course, we want to stop guessing. That's the big one for me. That's a big one. You know, uh, there was a, a while when I did not read the back of labels on food that I was about to eat. I would just guess. I'm like, ah, there's probably some protein in here, maybe a little bit of fat. And then you turn it over and you start reading it. You're like, holy Moses, there's 97 grams of saturated fat in this peanut bar. 
Why am I eating a peanut bar? I don't know. I couldn't think of anything. You're going to have to work with it. If you want additional resources that are not just this 30 day program, but someone to walk you through it, uh, I'd love for you to talk to someone on the Hey Money team. They uh, are stationed as they always are all around the country. They're CFPs and AFCs, some of the highest credentials you can have in the financial world. And they're standing by to walk you through this if you don't want to do it yourself. But you know what? I'll be honest. I designed this for you to do it yourself. But some people have uh, situations that need to be triaged. They need immediate advice. And so if you go to callheymoney.com, that's callheymoney.com, you can get their help. And of course, the coupon code is cheese. Someone sent me a, a weird message and said, why did you choose that? And I said, well, why not? What am I going to choose? Pandemic. Co coupon code pandemic. No, I don't, I don't want to do that. Let's just take it easy. Okay. Day two, here's what we're doing. We are taking a stability test. I highly recommend, I'll, I'll uh, filibuster here for a second. Grab something to write with and something to write on or just whatever digital device you happen to have open a, a notes window because you're going to need to keep score. Yeah, we're doing an old style uh, score. You know, when I was in middle school uh, and I used to be in band, uh, there's these girls that sat in front of me that played the clarinets, right? Uh, one clarinet each, so a plural, clarinets. And they, they it's when girls started reading Cosmopolitan magazine. Seems a little early now that I have an 11-year-old. Seems a little early, but I remember they used to take quizzes in the back of Cosmo. Today, we're going to take that sort of quiz in your financial life, so that's coming up in just a moment. And then this one's interesting. I want to help you find your advantage. I, I, I have this weird belief, and it's a little cosmic, so I'm sorry, that all of us catch two to three good breaks a year financially. I could probably quantify that with data. I'll just say qualitatively, and I will say anecdotally, over the last 20 years, I have noticed that most people catch two to three breaks per year. And by that, I mean there's an opportunity to move your financial life forward. Today, in just a moment, we're going to help you identify what those are. So when they happen, you don't ignore them. Or when they happen, you, you don't just go, oh, how lucky am I? No, we, we know these things are coming. And we can't let them surprise us and we can't waste that opportunity once it gets here we're going to dive right in to the quiz now okay so uh grab your pen and paper we're going to evaluate how stable are you when it comes to debt budgeting and risk management yeah this is why i gotta make jokes every once in a while because those three things are heinously boring that's why i say with a smile on my face because otherwise we'd all be crying together on a live stream i'd short out my computer and we'd be in trouble so let's start with budgeting. We're going to have you keep score. At the very end, we're going to add up the score of each category and tell you what it means. So as I pull up this first slide here, I want you to write down the score associated with the uh, multiple choice, the choice you chose. First question, how much credit card debt do you have? Of course, if you don't have any, you write down zero. If you have uh, less than uh, $3,000, essentially, 2,999, put a point. Three grand to 6,999, two points. Seven grand to 14,999, three points. 15 gur and over, give yourself four points. Write that down, mark it down. By the way, when this is over, this uh, video will post and you can always rewind it then, okay? So don't freak out, we'll, we'll get you. All right, so that's question number one. Everyone recorded their score? Great, we're moving on. Question number two, how much student loan debt do you currently have? Once again, if it is uh, zero, then go ahead and just draw the shape of my head right there on your, your paper. That's the shape of a bald man's head. B is less than four, nine, 99. C is five grand to about 20 grand. D is 20 grand to about 50 grand. And E is 50 grand and above. You get four points if you have 50 grand and above. All right, everybody got that. Next question. Do you owe a family or friend any money? If the answer is no, draw my head. If the answer is yes, give yourself three points. All right, so we've got the points there. Next, we're moving on to budgeting. Are you ready for this one? So put this in a separate column. Do not add debt total to budgeting total to risk total. They're separate uh, numbers, okay? So separate totals. You're going to have three totals at the end here. Question number one. Do you owe a family member or friend any money? Oh, wait, that's not right. This is the first question. We already did that one. See? This is what happens to live stream. I'd edit it out if this was on tape, but look, 
That's what you get. It's a pandemic. What is your current monthly income surplus? A, over $2,000, you get zero points. B, 1000 to 1999 you get one point. C, if every single month you have $250 to $1,000 left over, uh, you give yourself two points. D, if you have zero to 250 it's three points. If you have no uh, surplus, in fact, you have a shortage every month, that's four points. Just so you understand, a surplus is how much money you have left over after your expenses over the course of the month. If, you, if you'd like, you can include the money you already saved. For instance, if I put $500 in my savings account on the third day of each month, uh, then I can say that I have a $500 surplus if that is the only money I save and or have left over at the end of the month. Okay, so planned savings is still technically surplus. However, if your income matches your bills and you're not saving any money, then you absolutely need to put either D or E moving on. How much do you have in emergency funds right now? If you have six months of expenses or more, give yourself zero points. Three months gives you one point. One month gives you two points. A thousand bucks on the nose-ish gives you three points. And less than a thousand dollars gives you four points. And of course, none gives you five points. You don't have an emergency fund, but you have five arbitrary points that don't matter at all. Next, next column. All right, so we're moving on to risk. So we've had some questions for debt. We've had some questions for budgeting. We are on to risk. Now, I'll tell you right now, let me just put it out there for you. And I wish you could see my face, but again, I'm running the show myself. My production people are working safely from their own homes. So uh, I'm a one-man band, like Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, so sorry. I, here's what I, here's my point. Talking about risk during this time, this recession is not fun. Like we're talking about some pretty nasty things in the last few days. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of people getting sick and die and not great things. I'm about to talk to you about bad stuff, which is risk, right? First question, are you adequately, ad it'd be great if I can talk. It'd be good for my live stream views. Are you adequately, yeah, we, are you adequately insured in terms of home, car, and life insurance? So if you are a homeowner or a renter, if you're a renter, do you have a renter, you know, a homeowner or renter's coverage? If you're a homeowner, do you have homeowner's coverage? Do you have the proper car insurance coverage where you aren't in trouble if something bad happens? Then finally, life insurance. To me, if you have survivors, as we call them, people who depend on you financially, uh, primarily young children and a significant other, you typically should have about 10 times your income in life insurance. That can be a shocking number if you've never heard it before. But let's say you've got $40,000 of annual income. Theoretically, you should have about $400,000 of life insurance. If that is the case for you and you've got the proper home and auto coverage, by all means, mark yourself down for zero points because that's a yes. And if you don't, that's okay. But you get three points and we'll deal with the ramifications of that later. If you have specific questions about life insurance as it relates to this, just post them in the comments. We'll come through and clean them up when we're all said and done. Next, do you have life insurance outside of work? So some employers like Your Money Line and Hey Money, we have life insurance for our employees. That means if something happens to them, then their family gets paid and uh, their employer, Mr. Bold Guy here, pays for the premium. So if that is you and that's all the coverage you do have, go ahead and mark down uh, zero points for yes. If you have uh, coverage outside of work, well, actually, you know what? I, I said this wrong. We're filled with airs today. Uh, if you have life insurance outside of work, choose A for zero points. If you don't, if all you have is at work or you have none at all, mark down B for three points. Do you have a will or trust? A lot of people think, oh, I don't have any money. I don't need a will or trust. That's okay. That's fine. So mark down no, and you get three points. If you do, great, zero points. Now we can go into this later, and we very well may. Uh, sometimes just an online will is good enough. Not always but it's certainly better than nothing. So places like LegalZoom, it's okay. It's okay. I'd rather you go to an attorney, but look, we're, we're trying to piece together a plan in 30 days. Maybe it's more economical to go to a website that does that, but that's neither here nor there right now. Finally, last question in the risk category. Do you have an employment backup plan? Whew. 
I'm going to be a dancer. If something goes wrong, if people don't listen to my financial advice, well, I'm going to just be probably a hip hop dancer. I took a class once. It didn't go well. No, what I give a backup, like a legitimate backup plan. If, if your boss comes to you in the next 60 days and says, look, and this recession is not working, um, we're going to have to let you go. Right? Things got serious way too quick there. Uh, if that's the case for you, if you have an employment backup plan, mark down zero points. If you don't, mark down three. All right, it is a point party. Hey, I'm back. Man, you probably liked it better when you couldn't see my face. I have some gifts. They just are not aesthetic. Okay. Uh, if in any category, so start, go look at the categories, add up the totals in each category, add them up real quick. Some elementary math will, will come to a head here. In the coming days, you may actually see my elementary age school children come in and interrupt the live stream. And you may hear me correct them as a good adult would. Uh, all right. So if you scored three or less in any of those categories, great. You have stability if you scored three or less in any one of the three categories. If you scored three or less in all three categories, holy Moses, you're very stable. That's great. It's great. We have something to build on. If you scored four to seven, we got some work to do. Man, am I glad we're spending time together, right? If you scored eight or more in any of the three categories, you know, boy, am I really glad you're here, right? Because we got we, we have some serious work to do because there's not a lot of stability. And, you know, and it happens, and I'm not judging, and I get it, and I've been there. If you have over eight as a total in all three categories, this is the perfect time, these 30 days to take control of some things. Things are already mm, not great. So let's see what we can do in the next 30 days, right? Let's just see what we can do. Here's what you don't know. Maybe you do know. Thousands, tens of thousands, arguably hundreds of thousands of people have been through a version of this program before, right? So it's, 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 you know, an alternative to a program I wrote back in 2009. And a lot of people have been able to turn it around. I think you can too. And here's how you do it. You've got to understand what opportunity looks like. You know, maybe if the government literally writes us checks and then like in three weeks, you go to the mailbox with gloves on and you open the mail and sanitize and you have a thousand dollar check and you deposit it then re-sanitize, that is opportunity. Or maybe you get a tax refund. Like right now, people are saying, well, I'm going to delay filing. If you're getting a tax refund, don't delay filing. Like don't. I, I don't know if there's a slowdown at the IRS or not. Uh, but I would file right away if you're getting a refund because you need that, as they say in the investment world, dry powder, which is just cash. I just wish they wouldn't say dry powder. It's a weird thing. Maybe your advantage, maybe the best thing you got going for you is you got a little bit of money saved. Maybe it's in a CD, not compact disc, but certificate of deposit. Maybe it's just in a boring checking account. Maybe your Aunt Jenny gave you a savings bond and that's where it is. That's fine. Uh, maybe the best thing going for you is you got a stable job. You know, there's a lot of teachers not working right now. They're getting, well, you know what? Let me correct that statement. They're working. They're not in the building, right? They're not in the building. They're in their own household doing work. I look at the work that uh, our kids' teachers have put in already to teaching them remotely for you know months. It's a lot of work. So let me take back that earlier statement. However, they do have a lot of job stability. So if you're joining me right now and you're an educator, first of all, thanks. Second of all, you have a lot of stability, right? You, you have stability. So you're going to be okay. And that may be the best thing you've got going for you. Or maybe you can't say any of these things. The best thing going for you is that you're committing to do this every day at 2 p.m. Eastern. Nothing wrong with that. It's got to start somewhere, right? There's a, a guy I work with, uh, one of my colleagues, his name's Brent. He always says, we don't shame beginnings. It's a beautiful phrase. Yeah, I wish I came up with it. I wish so bad I came up with it, but I didn't. Brent did. He's working from home right now. We don't shame beginnings. If the best thing you have going on in your life right now financially is that you took the time to stare at my face, it's okay. I mean, poor taste in faces, but it's okay. We're, we're going to build on it, right? If you need help, just uh, shoot comments in uh, the video here and we'll get after it. If you're watching on YouTube and you have questions, put them on there too. Uh, I'm working overtime that, these next 30 days. So I'll get a hold of you one way or another. Make sure we get this question answered. But if you want personalized help back and forth on the phone, via text, via email, via our live app, go to call Hey Money dot com and you can get personalized help we priced it so people could afford it 
It's 20 bucks a month for a financial expert. It's a very uh, unusual business offering. How do I know this? Well, because I used to be a fee-based financial advisor and I used to charge people thousands of dollars a year to do this. I wanted to come up with a way that we can serve the masses, the people that really need help for 200 bucks or less a year about that. And so you can either pay all at once or you can pay 20 bucks a month and we can get through this together. All right, coming up in the coming days here on the live stream, the uh, recession proof your life, your finances in 30 days, whatever we called it, gee, many Christmas. We're going to talk about the new necessities. You know, sometimes when your parents tell you and they get upset because you can't figure out what they were able to figure out when they were your age, what they don't realize is there's probably 250 to $300 a month of expenses that you and I have, that they now have, that they didn't have when they were your age. Life's more complicated now. In many ways, it's easier, it's more convenient, but those conveniences really add up. So uh, that's all we got. That's all we got for today. Uh, if you're not following me on Twitter, please do, at Pete the Planner. Every morning before you wake up, before some people wake up, uh, I will have a rundown of what's going to happen that day financially. We'll take a look at the market, the economy, try to keep uh, some calm around here. We're here to help. You know, that's why we're doing this. I'm very passionate about helping people figure stuff out around their finances. So lean on us. We're here for you. All right. That's all we got time for today. Uh, hit those questions our way. We'll answer and we'll get through this together. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.